Welcome to a new section of our course Docker for Development. In this section, we will delve into how Docker can revolutionize your development process from setting up your environment to deploying applications with confidence and ease. Let's take a brief look at what we will be covering. We will start by exploring how Docker can be a game changer in setting up development environments. You will learn about the essentials of Docker in a development context, how to configure Docker to meet your development needs, and the significant benefits it brings to the table for developers. This lecture will lay the foundation for using Docker effectively in your projects. Next, we will dive into Docker files, the blueprint for creating Docker images. This lesson will provide an overview of the best practices for writing Docker files. We will discuss the importance of optimization and security in your Docker files, ensuring you are building efficient and secure images right from the start. Finally, we will tackle one of the more challenging aspects of working with Docker debugging containers we will cover the common challenges you might face introduce you to the tools and the strategies that can make debugging a breeze and share best practices to help streamline the debugging process this lesson aims to equip you with the knowledge to quickly and efficiently resolve issues in your containerized applications and by that we get to the end of our lesson thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson Welcome to a new lesson where we will dive into setting up an advanced Docker development environment. In this lesson, we are focusing on practical skills, showing you how to optimize and manage your Dockerized development setup efficiently. Let's get started. So here I have created a web directory, and inside web directory, I created three files for our lesson today. The first file is the Docker file that we will build our Express Node.js application from. So in this Docker file, I'm using the Node version 14 as the base image. Then I set up the working directory in the container to slash app, and I copy everything from the current directory to the app directory inside the container. Then I execute run npm install, to install any needed packages specified in the package JSON file. Then I expose port 8000 to the world outside the container. And I also define an environment variable that the node underscore env is production. Then I run the application or the index.js. So let, let me modify this to be index.js. So I will execute inside the container the command node index.js then we have our index.js file it's a simple node.js code that only shows a hello world output and also it will be listening on port 8000 finally to our package json which is very simple we here define all the dependencies for our express code or express node.js code okay now let me close all those files and let's create our docker compose file so i will execute touch docker compose.yml let's edit the file and as we learn it together the first line inside the docker compose will be the version and we are using version 3.8 then we will define our services so let's type services here and our service is a web service and this web service will be built from the docker file inside the web directory so let's type build then i will define the path to the docker file so the docker file inside web directory i want to expose and map ports so let's type ports here and i will map the port 8000 on my local host to port 8000 inside the container then i want to mount our source code to the container so i will type volumes here and the first mount will be the web directory and the web directory will be mounted to slash app which is the working directory for 
the Node.js application inside the container. Then I will also create the volume slash app slash node underscore modules. Now let's define a variable for the web. So let's type here environment and our environment will be node underscore env development. And the variable here inside Docker Compose will override the variable from the Docker file. Or let me rephrase that. So when we build the image, the environment node underscore env inside the image will be production. But when we define here a new variable for the node underscore env to be development, that means that when we run the container, then the running container will take the value of node underscore env from the docker compose so it will be development now our web service will depends on the db service so now let's define our second service for this lesson which is the db service the db service will be running from the postgres image so i will type here postgres and i want version 13. Let's also define some environment variables for the DB service. So I will type here environment and our first environment will be postgres underscore user. Let's type dev user. The second environment variable will be postgres underscore password and the value is dev pass. Then let's define postgres underscore db and the value is div db. So when the db service runs the container from the image Postgres 13, it will create the Postgres user, Postgres password, and Postgres database that we defined inside the environment. So in this Docker Compose file, we have a web service and a db service. The web service builds from a Docker file in the web directory. And we map the application's port 8000 to the same port on the host. We are also mounting the project directory to slash app inside the container, ensuring live reloading of our code. Now let's enhance this with a docker compose.override YAML file for development specific settings. This allowed us to keep our main docker compose YAML file optimized for production. So let's create a new file here with the name docker compose.override and let's edit this file docker compose override yaml also the version will be 3.8 the services will be the same web service but we will define a different environment here debug equal one and also we will change the exposed ports or the mapped ports so this time we will do 3000 on my local host will be mapped to 8000 in the running container then to the db service and we will override the ports here to be 5432 and 5432 so this override modifies the web services port to 3000 and expose our database's port for direct access, useful for debugging. Docker Compose dot override YAML is a powerful feature of Docker Compose that allows you to override settings in your base Docker Compose YAML file for local development, testing, or any situation where you need to modify your application's configuration without altering the main Docker Compose file. This mechanism helps maintain clean and maintainable configurations by separating environment-specific settings like volume mounts for development, port changes, or environment variables from the core service definition. And by default, when you run Docker Compose up, Docker Compose automatically looks for a file named docker-compose.yaml and an optional override file named docker compose dot override dot yaml or also you can rename this to dev or test or whatever then docker compose up will merge the configurations in the override file over the base file okay before executing docker compose command 
let's go back to our docker compose.yml file and as you can see here for the db service i defined the environment variable for postgres user password and db but i hard coded the values here which is not the best practice because you need to take any sensitive data from the docker compose file so let's incorporate env files to manage environment variables let's create a env file in our project root so i will execute touch dot env and let's edit the env here and inside the env i will provide the node underscore env to be development then i will provide the value for the postgres user postgres password and postgres database and to the debug now let's update our docker compose yaml to use the variables from dot env so for the postgres user i will type dollar sign then curly braces and postgres user i will do the same for postgres password and postgres database this approach keeps your configuration flexible and secure now let's put this into action ensure your docker engine is running and from the terminal let's execute docker compose up minus minus build minus d and here i added minus minus build because in our docker compose file we are building our image for the web service from a docker file now press enter to execute the command and as you can see it is now running the db service and now it is building the web service from the docker file and it created and started the container for the db and the container for the web to verify our work let's run docker compose then ps and as you can see from the output we have the db service running and the web service running and also we can see the configuration we added to the docker compose override so for example here the port for the database is exposed to the public and also we have here the port that inside the docker compose file and also the override port we defined inside the docker compose override file now let's verify our work from the web browser so i will go to localhost 8000 and as you can see the hello world message shown for me let's also try with the port from the docker compose dot override yaml file and also as you can see we can see the hello world now let's make a change in our web application so i will go to the index.js and i will change the hello world here to hello students i will save my change and from here i will execute docker compose restart then the web service to reflect our changes and here the web service started and it took like 10 seconds to restart the service now let's bring back the web browser and let's revisit the localhost 8000 and as you can see right now it loads the new changes we just made and the credit for that goes to the volumes we have defined here in the docker compose so we mounted the web directory to the slash app directory inside the container so whatever change you will do inside the web directory as we did with the index.js content it will be reflected inside slash app but of course if to reflect that change you need to restart the node.js application then you will need to restart it with the docker compose restart then the service name in our use case the service name is web and that's it for this lesson today thank you for watching and see you in the next lesson